Selective attention is the process of focusing on a particular object in the environment for a certain period of time. Attention is a limited resource, so selective attention allows us to tune out unimportant details and focus on what matters. This differs from inattentional blindness, which is when you focus hard on one thing and fail to notice unexpected things entering your visual field. How does selective attention work? At any given moment, we are subjected to a constant barrage of sensory information. The blare of a car horn from the street outside, the chatter of your friends, the click of the keys as you type a paper for school, the hum of the heater as it keeps your room warm on a brisk autumn day. But in most cases, we don't pay attention to each and every one of these sensory experiences. Instead, we center our attention on certain important elements of our environment, while other things blend into the background or pass us by completely unnoticed. So how exactly do we decide what to pay attention to and what to ignore? Imagine that you are at a party for a friend hosted at a bustling restaurant. Multiple conversations, the clinking of plates and forks, and many other sounds compete for your attention. Out of all these noises, you find yourself able to tune out the irrelevant sounds and focus on the amusing story that your dining partner shares. How do you manage to ignore certain stimuli and concentrate on just one aspect of your environment? This is an example of selective attention. Because our ability to attend to the things around us is limited in terms of both capacity and duration, we have to be picky about the things we pay attention to. You can always see your nose, but your brain has the ability to ignore it. Have you ever wondered why your nose never seems to get in the way of your vision, even though it's right there in the middle of your face? Or why, once we're dressed, we no longer feel the clothes against our skin? It's basically our brain's way of being selective, hence the term unconscious selective attention. If, after all, our brain had to constantly be giving us up-to-date information on whether our nose was still in place or what clothes we are wearing, there would simply be no time for it to get on with the other important things like keeping us alive, so it uses unconscious selective attention and fools us into ignoring our noses because, in the scheme of things, they are not that important. For similar reasons, we don't always notice what's going on before our eyes. You can try an experiment at home with a friend. Show them a simple picture of a person against a colored background. Then, a couple of seconds later, show them the same person against a patterned background. The chances are, they won't even notice the difference. This obviously only works, so long as they don't see you change the photos, and it's how magicians sometimes appear to do magic, using their knowledge about unconscious selective attention. This is also known as inattention blindness, and it is our brain's way of stopping us from seeing too much and overloading our minds. Imagine that you had something important to do like study or write a letter. How infuriating would it be if your brain was constantly telling you to look at your nose? You simply wouldn't be capable of concentration, so our brain simply switches off its attention to our nose and helps you to concentrate on the task at hand. Many of us use video cameras in our cars to record any traffic incidents we may be involved in. Have you ever played back the footage and realized you missed something that's in the video? Well, the next time you are driving your car and you realize that you've just driven three miles and not noticed anything at all, remember, what you were thinking about was probably more engaging than your safety on the road and your mind gave it the priority. Moral, try to engage your brain when driving as it might just save your life.